again, everyone, and welcome in to Red Hawk Football Weekly. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. Today, we'll recap the loss at Western Michigan on Saturday against the Broncos and preview this Saturday's family weekend game against Northern Illinois. And joining me is head coach Chuck Martin and uh, coach frustrating game to say the least on Saturday uh, against the Broncos. Uh, you did a lot of really good things in that game. The first quarter dominated and plus uh, I think all the way up to what the 633 mark of the second quarter. But the thing that probably was feared the most was the big play of Western Michigan and ultimately it wound up costing you. Yeah, no, we knew they're a big play offense and um, yeah, we came out on the road ready to go. We were smoking on offense. We were playing phenomenal defense, really good ST. Uh, story of the game for us is missed opportunities on both sides of the ball. We drive down, we settle for three. We drive down, we settle for three. We drive down, we go forward on fourth down, we get stuffed, we don't get it. So now you got three trips in, in, in their territory and you don't have anything more than six points. Obviously, Sloman cashes in, makes a couple great field goals for us. Um, and he's been phenomenal all year. Then defensively, we're getting stops, we're getting stops, but we get interception, return it to their 17-yard line, called back on a defense holding penalty. Later in the game, we get another huge interception, return it to their side of midfield, called back on defense. Two other interceptions within the game we dropped that are right in our hands. So missed opportunities on offense of not finishing drives, missed opportunities on defense of creating opportunities for turnovers and then either getting them and getting them called back or or not making the play and finishing the deal so and then they get a big pick six we make a mistake and, and make a poor choice at quarterback and they get a pick six we blow a coverage they throw an overhead and uh, like we talked in the press conference you're, there's 10 minutes to go in the game we've doubled their yardage right. you've outgained them 355 to 171 they're averaging over 500 yards a game on offense and we've held them 171 yards total in the game. Mm -hmm. And we've had 355 yards of offense, but we're still down 21 to 16 because as you alluded to, the big plays, right. the pick six and the ball over our head when we blow a coverage have, have put them in a lead in a situation where we should have probably a 19 to seven lead at minimum. And if we can cash in and score some, finish some drives on offense, we could be up even more. But credit to Western Michigan, we always talk about big plays and turnovers, and that's they won that battle, and that's they may not have won the majority of the plays in the game. We still outgain them at the end of the day, even though they outgain us the last 10 right. minutes. Right. Um, but they end up winning the football game. Well, and that's, that, that was, I mean, the big plays. You go over the offensive statistics, and you mentioned it, 130 yards in his last two drives where they scored. But if it weren't for a big play, your defense just did a phenomenal job because I think – 90% of their yardage, it seemed like, came on those chunk plays. Yeah, and for, for the first 50 minutes, we played great oh, yeah. defense. We yeah. had them to 171 yards, and yeah, you're, you're not going to be perfect for 50 minutes. Right. And, and But the, the one you want to have back is we blew a coverage and gave a 42-yard touchdown on a blown coverage. We didn't make them earn it. Mm -hmm. Everything else for the first 50 minutes, they earned. Yeah. All right, and, and, we, and they didn't get a lot, and we got tons of stops. And the, the thing we didn't get is those turnovers that we need to get. We, we, like I said, we could have had five interceptions. We had three, two were called back, two others were right in our hands, and we drop them. And those are game-changing plays. Obviously, with their interceptions, mm -hmm. the game-changing plays. So, um, yeah, very frustrating day, but we were well-prepared. Our kids did a phenomenal job. We went on the road against a good team, and we, were, we already said we're going to have to take this game. And our kids tried to take the game. They did everything, yeah, they did. but we need to execute better in certain situations. And if we did, we'd had a great road victory. As we take a look at the first half highlights in this one, we'll begin with that Miami second drive and a quick throw out to uh, Tyree Shelton for five. Yeah, and good physical. We talk about, you know, scheme's not going to win it. You got out physical team, and here's Tyree being very physical, obviously, with the DB uh, and getting some yards after contact. And then it is Jalen Bester up the middle yeah, or off yeah. the screen. Yeah, a key third down, one of the few third downs we converted early. Uh, we got a nice little slip screen to Jalen. And we get some good blocking out in front with our offensive line with Caleb Schaefer there and Jared LaRubio. And then Jalen does a good job of getting the first down. Then you find Dom Robinson for 15. Yeah, good throw over the middle in between the zone coverage. They're playing their quarters coverage. We hit it in between the mic and the wheel. Uh, Dom does a great job of catching the ball and then holding on and taking a hit. Wind was a factor in this game all day long. And uh, this one, with the wind at his back, probably didn't need it. Sam Sloman's good from 51 yards for the first score of the game. Makes it Miami 3-0. A little bit later on, uh, another drive for Miami. And Cam Blakely is featured in the first couple of plays. Yeah, nice job. And Cam had his best football game. He, again, young kid, redshirt freshman. He's just starting to get his feet underneath him. But that's the first game I felt like he really looked confident out there and playing his game. And a couple nice short catches here and getting, getting our drive started good. Here's a first down catch for him. 
and uh, you'll follow up on second down. Actually, that was the second, the pr first down catch. And then here's Sam Sloman again, finishing off this one with a 49 yarder. Yeah, and again, Sloman's good. You know, the wind helps him, but 49, 52, no win. Sloman can go from 60. So great job. He's been kicking tremendously and really been a huge asset to our team. Here's one of the interceptions you were talking about, Coach Sterling Weatherford uh, timed that one up beautifully and gets the interception. It would come back on a pass interference penalty against Miami, and you get another look at it here. Yep, yeah, and again, got to do a better job at the top of the route. We, we, we got a little hold of the jersey. Um, it's got to be called. It's, it's the balls being thrown to the receiver that we're holding. And again, we got to clean that up because we would have had the ball inside their 20 yard line. This was a fourth down play for Northern Illinois. and. Wasik could not find his favorite receiver, Giovanni Ricci, here, and you're going to get the ball back on downs. Yeah, another good stop for our defense. Our defense yeah. obviously is playing tremendously well, uh, really up until last nine minutes of the game. Red Hawks get the deep ball here to James May for 46 yards. Yeah, good play action, took advantage, quarters coverage, got him one-on-one, -on -one the safety. James does, runs a good route. Brett throws a great ball. A uh, huge chunk play, and again, setting us up again. We're up 6 nothing, and right now we're in complete control of the football game. And this is a great pass through a tight window to Andrew Homer. Yeah, key third down completion. We're now going to have first down on the 20-yard line, up 6 nothing with 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. And look at it again here, right between two defenders, and Andrew Homer hauls it in. You would get uh, close to the end zone here, fourth and about a yard for Miami, and unfortunately unable to pick it up. Yeah, no, we got to get a better push. We got to get a better push in front. We got to get a better push behind. Obviously, a uh, critical situation in the game. You got three quarters of a yard to get the first down, and, and, and we get stuffed and we don't get it. And this was the turning point of the first half. Yeah, obviously, talked about in the press. Brett saw him, hitched, didn't throw it, then decided he was still going to throw it, made a poor decision. And again, the last drive we get stuffed, this drive we're in a situation where we're going to get points again, and we. And we end up throwing a pick six. And as you see, it's 14-6 after Wasik hits Mixon for a touchdown, and you begin this drive, second and five at the Miami 30, and Jalen Bester with the best run of the day. Yeah, really good hole, really good run by Bester, good job with yards after contact. And again, Cam Blakely had several catches on the day, and this one is for 16. Yeah, another good throw and catch, and again, no issues moving the football, issues finishing drives. We, we did a really nice job of moving the football all day long. Third and nine, Brett Gabbard finds Jalen Walker for five. And then you would call upon Sam Sloman, who had been perfect on the day and on the year, really. But the wind, I mentioned, <laughs> played havoc all day long. This one was into the wind from 47, and he didn't miss it by much. No, it was a solid kick. He just hey, he had missed it a foot to left, had plenty of distance. Again, part of the frustrating first half, you're looking up 21 to six, you've told, even in the second quarter, they outscored us 21, we outgained right. them in the second quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't even outgain us in the second quarter. Um, but when you get a you know, 77 yard interception, but two drives settle for long field goals, another drive, you get stuffed on fourth down, another drive, you come up this in is, short yard. Yeah. And even the pick six, we we're down there turn, you have five drives inside their 40 yard line and right. you have six points on the board. So it wasn't a matter of, can we move the football? But like we've talked about, we got to finish those drives if you want to win football games and produce points. Then defensively, really, the only, you know, we blow the one coverage, and that's yeah. kind of the one blip on the radar. And, and we don't give up a lot of yards, but we got down 21 to 6. But we still felt like we had a great chance to win, and we knew our kids were going to come out and keep swinging the second half. We'll talk about the second half when we come back with more Red Hawk Football Weekly in just one moment. Run with us in the unstoppable John Deere Gator XUV 835 and be prepared to go the extra mile. Because when others take rain checks, we take the wheel. With three wide seating, heat, and AC, this is the coolest, most comfortable Gator yet. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Run with us and get $500 off your very own Gator XUV 835M at Koenig Equipment. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly is brought to you by Courtyard Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. And welcome back in to Red Hawk Football Weekly. Steve Baker here recapping the 38-16 loss to Western Michigan on the road this past Saturday at Waldo Stadium, talking about the second half and getting ready for that second half. Uh, what was the discussion at halftime? Because obviously you had outgained them, you had outplayed them in a lot of facets, but you still find yourself trailing 21-6. 
Well, obviously, we talked about we got to finish drives on offense. We talked about obviously we can't turn the ball over. We talked about defensively no more breakdowns because the only time they've moved the ball at all on you was a defensive breakdown. You're playing suffocating rush defense against one of the best backs in the league. A uh, quarterback that threw for 400 yards ago, we're getting after him. We're putting pressure on him. We're forcing him into bad decisions. We got to make the plays and finish the plays on defense, just like we got to finish drives off us. We felt good at halftime. We didn't feel good about the score. We felt really good about how we're playing, and our kids were coming out in the second half. We knew the third quarter was going to be key. We got to get back right back in this game, and defensively, we held a negative seven yards in the third yeah. quarter. We dominated the whole third quarter offensively. We moved the ball uh, some, probably not as much as we needed to, but we, we got ourselves right back in the game. You did indeed. Let's go to the highlights of this second half, and we'll begin with Miami's second drive. Davion Johnson for seven yards. Yeah. And again, that was a consistent theme. Our tailbacks had 20 carries for 90 yards on the day. Um, obviously, uh, Brett's rushing stats weren't that good. We got, we right. got sacked some, but um, we moved the ball enough on the ground. Uh, would have been nice if you're playing from a lead. We probably you know, could have stuck with the ground game a little more if you're playing ahead, but uh, we, we moved the ball fairly effectively. That was a nice run by, by Davion there. Here's Brett scrambling and finding 15 yards up the middle. Yeah, nice. Good job there. Everybody dropping in coverage. Big open in the middle. Brett takes it. Uh, gets us a nice first down and, and pushes the ball uh, deep, deep into their territory inside the 20-yard line. And then you call on Sam Sloman again, uh, his third field goal of the day. This one is good from 27. Nothing but down the middle for Sam Sloman there. And here's one of the big defensive plays coming up here in the uh, second half. Actually, excuse me, we got Dominic Robinson for 46 yards down to the three-yard line of Western Michigan. Yeah, great job. Throw a little hitch to Dom. Dom does a rest. Dom's a big physical receiver that can run after he catch. Obviously, you see him here. Uh, makes a corner miss, runs through a couple arm tackles, and then shows his speed and, and, and turns it into a huge chunk play. And it's 21-9 to nine at this point. And then Jalen bounces uh, an inside run. He bounces outside, and now we're right back in the game. There's there's 13:45 left in the game. We have, we have totally outplayed. Uh, our opponent up to this point, we're still down 21 to 16, but we've got ourselves back in the game. 21 16 at that point, Western Michigan would go on to the uh, 38 16 win. And uh, I did want to show, and uh, I'll add it in here, the Emmanuel Ragumba uh, interception. Really a great catch, uh, one handed, and really played that play particularly well. Yeah, no, our pass defense was really good all day. And, 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 and that was just another play. That's probably of the five interceptions. That was the most difficult. difficult that one. was, a, you know, yeah. really good coverage. They tried to double. We were taking away their short throws, so we kept talking about they're going to have to double move you because you're taking away the short throws. They tried to double move them. He stayed on top. He looked back. He makes a great interception, set us up on a short field. Uh, again, even the third quarter, we settled for a short field goal. There's five possessions that were in their tor territory deep, and you got nine points, mm -hmm. and they've got seven. Right out of those because they had a pick six when we were in there deep. Right. So five different times you put yourself in position to score and you only came away with nine points and you've given up seven in that same situation. You're, you're plus two in a game and, and that's the difference and that's what we talked about after the game. That's what we talked about yesterday and that's what we'll continue. Hey, we have to, it's, we played very good football, but you have to be able to finish on both sides of the ball, and Western did a better job of finishing than we did. Northern Illinois is the next opponent. The Huskies come to town this weekend, a 2.30 kick at Yeager Stadium for Family Weekend. We'll come back and talk about that when we return with more Red Hawk Football Weekly in just one moment. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly has been brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University.
And we are back in our final segment here of Red Hawk Football Weekly. Steve Baker talking to head coach Chuck Martin. And coach, Northern Illinois in town this weekend. We'll talk about them in just a second. But uh, you were asked about it in the press conference, and I know you've, you've talked about it uh, a lot this year. The, the MAC and certainly the first two weeks bears it out. Anybody can win this thing right now two games in. Yeah, no, it's, it's way too early to tell. Everybody wants to know how everything's going to shape up six weeks from now. But uh, we knew it was, this league's always even. This all, you know, like I said, very rarely does a team go undefeated in the MAC. It doesn't happen very often. Very often, one of the two sides, if not both, has a two loss team that wins their half of the league. Right. You know, Northern Illinois won our league at six and two a year ago. Um, and, and this year, I really felt like it's been more saying there's a lot of good seniors in this league a year ago. There was, there was not just at Miami, a lot of teams had a lot of good seniors that are moving on. Uh, and some of them moving on to the NFL. So uh, when you looked at all the good seniors that were leaving, you thought, hey, this is going to even even this thing up even more. Uh, and you look through two weeks, and there's two teams at 2-0, and oh, and uh, a bunch, two teams at 0-2, oh and, and a bunch of teams that are at 1-1. One and, one. and and it's, you know, we've got a good win over Buffalo. We had an opportunity at Western, which would have been a huge win on the road against a top, top opponent from the West. We didn't get it done. We're going to have another huge opportunity against a top opponent in the West coming our place who's coming off, you know, Northern's coming off a great victory. But it's going to be who can keep getting better, who can stay a little bit healthy, and, and who can keep their kids playing football the right way because it's it's going to be hard to win every week in this in, in 2019 in MAC football. Yeah, Northern Illinois comes into the contest uh, two and four, one and one in conference play. And you mentioned their big win. I was listening to that game on our drive back from Kalamazoo. Uh, Broncos scored 19 in a row to uh, go up on uh, Ohio before Ohio tied it and uh, just uh, the winning field goal by Northern Illinois right at the end. But um, Great passing game. Uh, they seem to use the tight end a lot uh, down the middle, but uh, the running game, and, you know, it's, it's not a typical of what we've, I mean, it's kind of typical of what we've seen, but I think it's a little different Northern Husky team that comes in. Here. Way more balanced on yeah. offense. Mm -hmm. same, same, Northern has been the best defense team in this league. Right. And they're known for defense, and they're still very good on defense. Um, offensively, they've been a very run-oriented team. Mm -hmm. They've always had running quarterbacks. They got a grad transfer in. Um, uh, he's more of a thrower through for mm -hmm, 360 mm -hmm. yards, whatever, more of a pot guy, really quick release, rocket of an arm. Yeah. I mean, and uh, sees the field well and makes really good decisions. So they still run the ball with Harbison and Nettles, and they got Jones, and they got a slew of backs. They got two crazy good tight ends that are big, long, athletic. That's their first leading receiver and their third leading receiver. And then they got a bunch of really long, fast wideouts mm -hmm. and, and can go. So they, they, they're, they're skilled on offense. They have more ability. Obviously, they didn't have a lot of 300-plus yard passing games the last last few right, years, obviously. Right. Uh, but different style of quarterback. They're still running the football very effectively. They're still physical up front. Um, so you still got that portion. But just like I said, they're more balanced than they've been in the past. Northern Illinois in town this weekend is Cancer Awareness Weekend. And Coach, uh, team will be wearing special helmets once again this year, uh, different <coughs> colored ribbons, the players getting to choose what color uh, that ribbon is and what cancer it represents. And uh, uh, this weekend is always kind of special. And I know it's an extended weekend for you guys because you did uh, the uh, Light the Night Walk last Thursday. Yeah, and it, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's for our league, it's the MAC, MAC is right. uh, Cancer Awareness Week for our whole league. And we obviously are excited to be part of that. And then we're excited with what Daryl does and Quinn people came up this ribbon idea that went crazy and got national attention. Um, great attention for our whole university uh, because we are on some national networks on Saturday morning. Right. And then obviously great for our kids. They get to pick the color of, you know, what cancer is prime. It's, they're all important, we know. But right. what, what cancer is most important to you, you get to pick the color ribbon. We've been involved with this. We've been, you know, with the Kaufman family, with the Richens family, with the Eversol family. We've been very involved with with you know this leukemia and this cancer awareness we we have been part of the light the night walk down in cincinnati which is a wonderful event and raises tons of money for cancer mm -hmm. research to make to to try to find the ultimate cure but also to find short-term cures to help right. help people that are afflicted so we we had a great night in cincinnati last thursday night we went on the walk and uh so it, it's it's just an extension of what we started last week and really for us we do it all year round coach wish you the best of luck this saturday thanks for joining us thank you head coach chuck martin joining us again 2 30 is kick time at jaeger stadium on Saturday. Get out there early, tailgate, have a great time as you come to Jaeger Stadium. Myself, Terry Bridge, and Randy Hollowell will have the radio call for you on the Miami Sports Network beginning at 1.30 on Saturday afternoon with the Knowles of Oxford Tailgate Show. For head coach Chuck Martin, I'm Steve Baker. Thanks for watching Red Hawk Football Weekly.